And here is the Writer's Almanac for Monday, the 14th of June, 2021. It's Flag Day, 1777. On this day, the Second Continental Congress approved the Stars and Stripes as the flag of the United States. Today is the birthday of Harriet Beecher Stowe, born Litchfield, Connecticut, 1811, daughter of a prominent minister, Lyman Beecher, a great abolitionist. She married, moved to Cincinnati, which was just across the Ohio River from a slave-holding state, Kentucky. And Harriet Beecher Stowe encountered fugitive slaves, and from her experience, she wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin. 1852, a national sensation. The novelist Jane Smiley wrote an essay in 1996 in Harper's in which she said that Uncle Tom's Cabin was a better book than Huckleberry Finn. She said, Huck Finn fails even where it succeeds by allowing white people to feel good about getting over their racism without ever actually doing anything about it. Personal relationships, she wrote, do not mitigate the evils of slavery. In Huck Finn, she wrote, all you have to do to be a hero is acknowledge that your poor sidekick is human. You don't actually have to act in the interests of his humanity. It was on this day, 1942, 13-year-old Anne Frank began to keep her diary, in which she wrote, The best remedy for those who are afraid, lonely, or unhappy is to go outside somewhere where they can be quite alone with the heavens, nature, and God. Because only then does one feel that all is as it should be, and that God wishes to see people happy. And today is the birthday of the screenwriter Diablo Cody, born Brooke Busey in Lamont, Illinois, 1978. She moved to Minneapolis to join her boyfriend, whom she met on the Internet. She took a job as a stripper in the Skyway Lounge, wrote a memoir about it, Candy Girl, set out to write a screenplay based on her memoir, and instead wrote the screenplay Juno, which won an Oscar when it came out in 2007. Here's a poem for Flag Day, a poem that Francis Scott Key wrote in 1814, watching the flag wave. You all know the first stanza, so I'll start with the second. On the shore, dimly seen through the mists of the deep, where the foe's haughty host in dread silence reposes, what is that which the breeze or the towering steep, as it fitfully blows, half conceals, half discloses? Now it catches the gleam of the morning's first beam, in full glory reflected now shines in the stream. Tis the star-spangled banner, O long may it wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. And where is that band who so vauntingly swore that the havoc of war and the battle's confusion, a home and a country, should leave us no more? Their blood has washed out their foul footsteps' pollution. No refuge could save the hireling and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave, and the star-spangled banner in triumph doth wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. O thus be it ever, when free men shall stand between their loved home and the war's desolation. Blessed with victory and peace, may the heaven-rescued land praise the power that hath made and preserved us a nation. Then conquer we must, when our cause it is just. And this be our motto, in God is our trust. And the star-spangled banner in triumph shall wave, o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. That's the Writer's Almanac for Monday, June the 14th, funded by donations from listeners like you, now available on PRX for distribution by your local radio station. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.